Three, two, one. one! We just sold our first kitchen table! Anyway, yeah, so we sold our first kitchen table in our new business and we sold it for a little over $6,000. Stick around and we'll share the story with you of how we did it. A funny thing happened when we started facing our fears. Our dreams came true. Now, we fly into the world's most dangerous storms as hurricane hunters. We own multiple businesses as entrepreneurs and we have an abundance left over to share with others. We have just one lesson to share. Don't follow your passion. Follow your fears and conquer them with your passion. That's how you achieve big goals. So if you're subscribed to our channel, you'll know that the last year our focus was on getting known within Houston. We've sold a lot of cutting and charcuterie boards despite our business's name as a table company. But it's time we finally start developing our building and production process for kitchen tables because... We just sold our first kitchen table in our business! So this week started just like every other. Davis was building some charcuterie boards because we were starting to get pretty low. All right, so today Jenny is back and she is catching up on sales calls, trying to make the money. So while she's doing that, I've got to do board fulfillments. We got one from a friend of ours and we got one from a mortgage broker requesting a board. So let's get at it. <laughs> All right, one is a sunset cutting board, and the other is just a cutting board that didn't specify. So I think we'll choose a sunrise board. So the sunrise boards are mostly hard maple with some cherry accents, and the sunset boards are mostly cherry with maple accents. See the difference? My favorite's the sunset. I like the, the dark cherry more than the maple. What's your favorite? Would you rather have a sunset board or a sunrise board? Let me know in the comments. Oh man, you're really gonna like this engraving. I think it turned out great. I like it. I like it. It's a special heart-shaped engraving for our Valentine's Day boards and one of Jenny's friends saw it and just had to have one. So that's why we did that. Suck at basketball. Man, I love this. This is so much fun. I love these boards. I love both of them. I'm super excited about the families that are going to get to get them and use them and display them, and uh, it just makes my heart happy. <laughs> And I was focused on getting caught back up after being gone for two weeks, flying through winter storms with the Air Force. For those of you who don't know, we also work part-time with the Air Force. We fly through hurricanes for research and we made a video all about it. You should go check it out. But yeah, we also fly through winter storms. So I was doing that for a couple of weeks, but after I got home, I was in full catch-up mode. So I'm back from my two weeks of flying winter storms and I am just like overwhelmed at how much I have to do and how much I have to catch up on. Um, I did a really good job of making like enough business content uh, before I left, but now I'm like, I'm fresh out. I gotta start all over again. I'm also just getting caught up with some leads, making lots of phone calls, sending some follow-up emails, all that sort of stuff. And it's crazy, I had yet another realtor thank me for calling them for like the eighth time, which I think is nice. Nuts. Nobody has ever straight up said, thanks so much for not giving up on me. I will call these people once or twice a week for weeks on end. And I literally just got off the phone with another person that said, thanks so much for keeping up with me and calling me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is just not the response I was expecting to get 
back from people, but that's like the eight or ninth person that have said that to me. So I guess I'll just keep calling. Am I reheating my coffee that I made this morning? Yes. Yes, I am. Ugh, today was such a busy day. Um, what you just got done watching me do was um, putting together a bunch of uh, Valentine's Day cards for our clients. Um, basically, I just sent them a card to say Happy Valentine's Day and we love working with you. And I included a little like $5 Starbucks gift card in there, um, just as a little something saying, hey, you know, the next cup's on us, just to continue to give value. Yes, I gave most of these people a free board when I first met them. That's what started the conversation. Um, but it's just little things like this to make it seem like you're constantly giving back to them um, so that they are more open to give to you in the form of money. So that's what I've been doing today. Um, also just trying to coordinate some events for us coming up in the future and just catching up, man, because I've been gone and it was just, it's a lot to catch up on. Also, we are doing a ton of work to finish up the new programs for you guys. Um, I don't even think we left the office until like 10.30 last night uh, working on those. And then we're back in here again at like, like 7 30 or 8 i don't even know but it's been a hectic couple of days but the programs are turning out so good i'm so excited for them to drop um we've had a lot of fun and i think you guys are really gonna enjoy it but then out of nowhere we got a phone call from a local friend here in houston and he and his wife hate their kitchen table I mean, it's a little, it's a little dated, but it was like hilarious just how much they hate the current table they have in their house. And I get it. Furniture is way more than just furniture. There's a lot of memories associated with it, like having your kid's first birthday party or helping your teenager with their homework or celebrating a graduation. There's a lot of feelings that go into each piece of furniture. Or in their case, stubbing their toe on the table leg literally every day for the last 10 years. So it was time for them to get a brand new kitchen table and we were going to be the ones to build it. So it was a little nerve wracking to hear that he wanted a kitchen table because we've been in board production mode for so long and going so hard at it that sometimes we forget that the cutting boards are just a means to market to people to build more kitchen tables. I mean, that's been the evil mastermind plan behind all of this all along. It just feels weird that it's actually happening, that we're actually like shifting into the next phase. It's also kind of jarring because we've been laser focused on revamping all of our new sales programs. Because at this point, we've built two different businesses in two different parts of the country, building two completely different product types, and we want to put that all in one program so we can share it with you guys. We believe if you follow a simple formula, anybody can start and run their own business out of their basement. We've done it twice now. And the second time it was so successful, we ended up in a big warehouse. Introducing My Basement Business. My Basement Business is an all-in-one program to teach a total beginner how to make a profit selling what they make. We're gonna take you from completely inexperienced, don't even know how to spell the word customer, to a fully transformed business owner that's making a profit. If you're anybody who wants to sell what it is that you make, this program is for you. Whether you wanna get out of debt, buy a new truck, pad the kid's college fund, or maybe just buy some new tools, whatever your goal is, this program is designed to help you build a business that can produce consistent cash flow that you can depend on, all by selling what you make out of your own house. We're launching My Basement Business on sale temporarily for you guys, our loyal viewers, so that you can get it cheaper than everybody else. So don't wait around, otherwise you're gonna get everybody else's price. All right, enough of the sales pitch. The link is below the like button in the description. It's also in the pinned comment to this video. Or you can just head to mybasementbusiness.com. So back to the kitchen table. We drew up a design, we got approval, we got a down payment, and we started on Samara Table Company's first official kitchen table sale. Okay, so we're a little rushed. We gotta order the lumber for this table like right now. So hopefully they have plenty available, which they should, because they always do. But I've literally got to call them like ASAP. So let's do that. Hi there, uh, I just need to place an order for some white oak. Uh, we're gonna need 150 board feet, uh, eight quarter, and then uh, minimum 10 foot length. Yep, random width is fine, uh, just rough cut. 
um, that's gonna be it. Pinch my finger real good. Not even on the wood. I was putting the truck bed back together. <laughs> the easiest part is where I hurt myself. Oh my all right, wanted to show you something. Uh, a lot of this lumber has cracks all through it. If you watch the Stumpy Nubs video where we were featured, you know that that's called case hardening. Um, as some of these boards, I can't show you right now, but they've got cracks all through the entire bottom. This whole piece of wood is punky all rotted away, but you gotta buy extra. This is why we don't share our source of where we get lumber, because I don't wanna put these guys on blast. Like, it's not their fault. It's the kiln that they buy the lumber from, because white oak is expensive right now, mm -hmm. and they're just cranking through as much as they can to try and appease the demand, so we just have to buy extra and, and move on. And it's just nice that we're not having to buy materials. It's, nope. the, it's the customer buying the materials, <laughs> so can't get upset. We just gotta buy extra and yeah, it's wasteful, but that's just the state of how things are right now. That's why you price high so that you can afford to buy extra. Customer wants white oak, so that's what we gotta do to give them white oak. But anyway, this is what $1,300 of white oak looks like <laughs> at this, this state in 2022 in Houston, so. They were like shocked when I ordered it on the phone. They're like, you know, that's gonna be like $1,500 of wood, right? And I'm like- I'm not paying for yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not paying for it, like load her up. <laughs> but yeah, this pile of sticks is going to turn into a beautiful kitchen table. So um, I bought about 30% extra in case we make a boo-boo or like you saw, we have cracks and splits and some waste. They want a nine foot long kitchen table. They got a lot of family. They wanna be able to sit everybody at the table and uh, this is what it's gonna take to do it. So this is what the kitchen table is gonna look like. We drew this up in a program called SketchUp, which is really nice because it's always good to give like non-builders or non-furniture makers an idea of what the final product is gonna look like because sometimes they have a hard time seeing it in their mind's eye and just visualizing it on their own. It also helps in closing the sale because you're telling them what it's gonna look like before you even build it, which if they're spending $6,000 with you, it's probably a good way to operate to make sure they're comfortable spending that amount of money with you. Sales is all about managing customer expectations so the more you can do up front to make them feel comfortable the better some of you old subscribers will know and recognize that this is a sales technique that we call the golden hour and basically that means within one hour of getting off the phone or talking to somebody who says they want to buy something from you you provide them a design of what that item is gonna look like it's not your final design, it's not your cut list, it is just some visual representation of the object that is good enough to help them see what it's gonna look like in the end. It's a fantastic sales technique for those of you who do custom jobs. So anyway, we are beyond stoked to start working on this kitchen table. We've got so much to learn, and, and while it's not our first kitchen table we've ever done, it feels like it is because it's the first one that we're doing in our brand new Houston business for a real paying customer and building it in the brand new warehouse shop. Man, it just feels so great to finally be selling large furniture pieces again. If you've sold your work before, you know that feeling. And if you don't know what that feels like, but you want to, you want to sell your work and, and to experience that feeling for yourself, anybody can do it. Check out our new program, My Basement Business, and we'll teach you all about how to start a maker business from your own home and start making a profit fast. We'll see you in there. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan. Stick to the plan.